Welcome to the office of Jess Carter, the minister for the New Grave, Florida Church of Christ. Glad you could be with us today. We are looking at lesson three, talking about the life of Abraham. We started here in about uh, chapter 12, the book of Genesis. Abraham is the most important, I would say, character of the Old Testament because it was through him that God made the great promises. In chapter 12, we start out with the promises. It says this, Now the, the Lord had said to Abram, which became Abraham, it says, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curse you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is the story, or the outline, for all of the Bible. The rest of the Bible is centered around these three promises. The promises that was made to him. The promise, first of all, was that he would become a, a great nation. That he would receive the land around which we call Palestine, was called Canaan, is called the promised land. This was to be given to him. Now, it was to be given to him, but there was going to be a stipulation on that. First of all, God has never taken land or anything from good people to give to good people. In this sense, we can see the reason why God did not give it to Abraham, but he gave it to his descendants. He gave it to his descendants because the sins of the Amorites, or the people in Canaan, was not yet that strong. Matter of fact, in chapter 14, we can see the story there of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, who was the king of Salem, but also was a priest of the Most High God. Chapter 14, we can see that even Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils of the war to this man of God. So, he was promised this land, but there's one stipulation. In chapter 15, it's important there that you look there in, in verse, chapter uh, 15 verse 15 and 16 talking to Abraham God said this now as for you you shall go to your father in peace you shall be buried at a good old age but in the fourth generation they that is his descendants shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet completed they was going to his descendants was going to get this promised land but not for 400 years away. When they went down to Egypt, later we see that they went to Egypt. It was in the plan of God that they would go to Egypt and be there for 400 years, and then they would be able to come back and receive that, that land that was going to be theirs. These are the promises. The promises, again, repeated. And I believe here we're going to look at today's uh, study would be called the promises to Abraham in chapter 18 in verse 18 we find this it says since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him it's not just that the Jews would be blessed or the Israelites as we call them but every nation would be blessed through and by, by Abraham, or Abram, who became Abraham later on. We see this happen. This is what happened here in the story, that Abraham was blessed. Also, we can see that the promise was that he would become a great nation. And his wife, uh, Sarah, had no children for so many years after that promise. So she became disillusioned. And Ty came to him and told him, basically, you know, I have no children. Take my handmaid. And she gave her handmaid, the Egyptian, said, let me have children by my handmaid. 
this was not designed by God. This was not something that was planned by God. But man, so oftentimes, you know, you know uh, got their own thoughts and ways and timetable instead of listening and learning from God. So she had a child. But that child was not the child of promise. That was not the one that he wanted. And because of this, there was a, a, a lot of turf. Matter of fact, there was a lot of wars in the sense, even today, the Arab people of Saudi Arabia and that part of the world are descended from this one man who has fought so much with the other people uh, that we see the story here beginning back, way back in, in Genesis. And then we see this promise continue when it talks about his son and his descendants. If we look at chapter 22 and verse 17, he said this, God said, Blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. It says, And your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Here, because God was going to bless Abraham, for the same reason you can be blessed. You can be blessed, all of us can be blessed, by what? It says, because he had obeyed my voice. You have obeyed my voice. If we obey the voice of God, even we today can be blessed. This is the promise that was given to him. And not only that, but all the nations. In Galatians 3 and 16, we find that there God talks to us about the promise. It said, not the promise was not made to seeds, but that through his seed, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. In our studies, we're going to continue to see and study about these three promises. The promise that the, his descendant would become a great nation where they would first, they would be, get the, the land, they would get, become a great nation, and then the third promise that we see fulfilled in the New Testament, that through his seed, not seeds as of many, but as one, Galatians 3 and 16, that all nations of the earth might be blessed. You and I are blessed today because of that seed of Abraham that we call Jesus the Christ. God be with you till we meet again.